Hello, everyone. Uh, first, I'm going to say that I'm going to talk, do my presentation not as I, but as we. Alex, not here, is watching his live stream all the way from Venice, so hello, Alex. And we're here to present you today the discovery of the millennium. We have found Atlantis. <laughs> but first, let's start with the facts. Azores are a group of islands located more or less halfway between Portugal and North America. They are formed by nine islands divided in three groups, and I call your attention to three of them, the Isle of Corvo, Pico, and Tristeira, that I'm going to address uh, particularly in this presentation. Let us start for the historical facts. And the historical facts say that the Portuguese were among the first nations and we have heard about this before and the reasons why we did it, upon the first nations to sail the, the North Atlantic. And during those navigations, we have found uh, the three main archipelagos in North Atlantic. The Canaries, the Canaries, uh, sorry, uh, oops, sorry. The, um, the Canaries around here, which were already populated by the Guanches people, believed to have come from North Africa. Uh, and during our sailing, since we had to go south and then make more, the most of the winds to get back north into Portugal, we have discovered Madeira in the late 14th century and a surge in early uh, 15th century. These are the kind of ships, just to give you an idea of the kind of ships that were sailing the seas at this time, a Portuguese Indian man. The surge and Madeira were essential in the, the model, the colonization and the trade model that the Portuguese had for their world domination. Uh, they were used as platforms, intercontinental platforms, with the trade with the West and the East. However, we should go back to the 16th century and probably question if were the Portuguese the first settlers in Madeira and Açores. If we go back to late 16th century, there is this writer, Portuguese biographer of the kings, Damião de Góis, who writes the biography of Dom Manuel, the chronicle of Dom Manuel. And somewhere along the book, he states that when they started to populate the islands of Açores, a equestrian statue was discovered in the Isle of Corvo. And this statue, where a man, a bareheaded man, with his hand faced west, was there at one of the points of the island. Dom Manuel asked for the statue to, br to be br brought to him in Lisbon. However, clumsiness or something, the statue was broken. And the, only the head and the arm were brought to Portugal. We have no idea what happened. And probably this was just an idea of folklore that the islands could have been occupied previous to the Portuguese. However, in the second half of the 18th century, a uh, German, uh, German journal, scientific journal, publishes nine Cartesian gold coins said to be found inside a pottery pot or pottery vessel in the same island. So we start to think, is it possible? Could someone be there prior to this discovery? And in fact, when we start to do some research, the evidence of contact between the Atlantic shores or between continents goes back to pre-Columbian times. And in the late 19th century and published in early 20th century, this statue of a Chinese man was found in an Aztec sanctuary. So something is happening here, but it continues. And African images of people are also being found in Mexico. So could this mean that there were already pre-Columbian contexts and pre-European contexts with Southern America and Central America? One of the things that characterizes ancient civilizations, and one of the most common architectural features is our pyramids. We know them from Egypt, we know them from Central America, and in the last couple of years, or in the last decades, we have been founding them, proving that other civilizations already also use them. And we have the Japan 11,000 year old pyramid, underwater pyramid. We have the famous Bosnian pyramids, this one's already being excavated and proven to be prehistorical. And here we can see the excavations and all the TV uh, fuzz that this originated, and here are the pyramids. But also in Azores, and we have found them. Archaeologists actually have found 
pyramid, uh, pyramids in a sludge. And I'm going now to present you some of this uh, evidence in the Isle of Pico, where the Madalena Parish, the, the zone of the Madalena Parish, where all these numbers represent this kind of pyramidal, pyramidal constructions, they are clearly orientated towards north, east, southwest, and also orientated towards the summer and winter uh, solstice and the other seasonal echinos. So this all seems to be a proof that they were evidence of pre-Portuguese settlement. And here are some of, the, some of the plans that have been made of the sites, the pyramids and the cuts we have made and the measurements and everything. And to prove this theory, archaeological excavations. Archaeological excavations, this is the entrance of one of those pyramidal structures. And archaeological evidence, uh, excavations that have provided uh, many artifacts. And stone artifacts, like the uh, weight nest, uh, weight, um, uh, net weight, for catching fish, uh, stone um, artifact, and fish hooks. Hmm? So all of this proves and confirms the theory that these islands were already populated before, of, uh, earlier to the Portuguese. And some of the constructions that you see around here, of course, many people believe that this was just a way of taking the stones to, be, to create a land proper suitable for agriculture, so that's not what we think. And despite the fact that many of our colleagues were against this, the, public, the publicity and the fact that we should go and tell people what we found, the journal, the newspapers decided to publish it. And this is the proof that we, are, we have pre-Portuguese uh, presence in the Isles. Although we also found charcoal, uh, we, are still waiting for the, we are still waiting for the, port, the C14, the radiocarbon determination. But it's not only in Pico, in Terceira as well, they are, what, they are very uh, megalithic structures, sanctuaries, here in Monte Brasil. As you can see, these sanctuaries, this kind of construction, is quite similar to the proto-historical Iron Age and Bronze Age uh, temple to Tanit Ungarit in Syria. But also in Grotto do Medo, a megalithic complex, this could never be uh, not handmade, this could never be natural. Natural things don't occur like this. And uh, also, the, um, the holes in the, 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 the ritual holes in the ground and other constructions. As you can see, remains of different constructions, but also inscription, probably Phoenician inscriptions. So this makes all the sense. But the relheiras também. The relheiras are car tracks. They are exactly car tracks. Quite similar, these are the Azorian ones, but quite sim similar to the ones that exist in the island of Malta, proven to be protosorical proven to be quite, quite ancient. And here you see Terceira, the Calheiras Terceira, and the same example, same as, well, in archaeology, we work for, simi for similarities. We look for similarities. We look for parallels, what we call parallels. However, if evidence of pre-Portuguese presence were not only, are not only historical and archaeological, but are also genetic, and there, this is a project financed by the Portuguese uh, uh, Fundação Paciência e Tecnologia, FCT, in Portugal. Uh, this is a project that has, uh, an, uh, the purpose of this project is to uh, uh, analyze the DNA of mice population in all the Atlantic islands, I mean, Madeira, Açores, and Canaries. And uh, <clears throat> the DNA markers, the mitochondrial DNA markers, have been analyzed for all the islands. And in fact, the results were generally the ones we should expect. The majority of the mice population has the same DNA markers as the uh, Iberian uh, rats. However, in Santa Maria, one of the islands in the Surge, the DNA markers for the rats are, uh, the DNA markers for the rats are Scandinavian. So this is quite proof that Vikings were there. Perfect. To support this theory, uh, last summer, this, this is quite recent, this man, this sailor, with using the GPS from his boat, find out or discover an underwater pyramid just off the coast of Santa Maria. So here you have one more evidence from the fact that Portuguese, these islands were already settled and people were already building architecture features here before the Portuguese settler. So we think we have gathered enough evidence to support that the lost city of Atlantis, already discussed by Plato and said to be located beyond the, the, the pillars of Hercules, has been found. 
And although some of our, our colleagues don't believe us and say that this is wrong, that this is a, a wrong theory, we always say that a huge discovery always begins with a denial, but no one dares to say today that Newton or Darwin were madmen. Thank you. I'm mostly speechless. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> it's good. Um, I'm kind of wondering, um, kind of wondering about, well, for example, radiocarbon dating, which you didn't didn't we, mention. We found so charcoal. That, that would support this theory. No, we have found charcoal uh, in the excavation. We are still waiting for the the analysis. The problem with, we believe that this is going to prove that these are pre-Portuguese uh, occupations. The problem is with what most of our colleagues said, that charcoal can have come from some eruptions. So eruptions are occurring every single time in the Azores, so we don't know if that's going to, what's going to be the date on that, but we're still expecting. You know, Pico, Pico is one of your examples, but it, I was surprised that you didn't note the very large pyramid in the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> Who built that? Evolution did it. God did it. <laughs> Geology did okay, it. Okay, uh, God, sorry. God... <laughs> <laughs> God's not you said it first. <laughs> God did it means that's out. <laughs> we're, we're scientists here. Yeah, of course. <laughs> no, geology did it. <laughs> uh, I was wondering what the connection is, you, if you can speculate on the connection between the, the Vikings, uh, the evidence for the Vikings being, going through, through mice, mm -hmm. and the African... Uh, uh, masks that you've uh, seen there. So how do you relate? Which which were the civilizations that came in? How does it relate well, to an there Atlantic? Is, there isn't any uh, connection between the... Well, we, I hope not, but probably <laughs> I can think about a relation. No. The, the, the African masks were to prove that there were contexts between continents prior to the Columbian, uh, the, the Columbus uh, traveling. Uh, the, the rats are... The, the Scandinavian rats... Uh, according to the, the paper that I read, and it's, this is fact, publishing a web of science, easy uh, journal. So I believe that our colleagues are actually publishing real science in this kind of uh, large impact journal. And the fact is, they state that uh, the mice got there due to Viking context. So Vikings were already a presence in the, in the Azorian island in the Middle Ages, the 9th century, 9th, 10th century. You know, I, I find your story extremely unconvincing for the following reason. You muddle up rats and mice. You, 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 you're confusing rats with mice. Mets, you just, you, you, mets, rat, ah, rats rats and, mice. and mice. No, okay, okay you're right. This, okay. Is, this is mice. <laughs> okay, it's mice. It's, it's all mice. mice. It's all mice. Right, yeah. Rats are different. Rats are different. <laughs> so if you, if you can't see the difference between a rat and a mouse, how, do we, <laughs> how can you expect us to believe anything you say? In Portuguese... <laughs> In Portuguese, we would call it um rato e uma ratazana. <laughs> yeah. That would be the major difference. I've heard of a few different Portuguese versions. There's a thing called camundongo. What? Excuse me? Camundongo. Camundongo? That's Brazilian. Oh, okay, okay, that's, that's Brazilian. Brazilian. <laughs> How about ratinho? Ratinho. Well, ratinho is a very... <laughs> anyway, anyway, you know, we're, we're scientists. We're not, not discussing not, rats. That's right. We're not, not, not social historians. So the fact of the matter is that a rat is ten times the size of a mouse. Exactly. And, and very vicious as well. Okay. We are discussing the find of Atlantis, not the rats. So I wonder if you have uh, uh, considered the diplomatic consequences of your finding and you might, what you might be unleashing with this kind of... Uh, claim 
Because if you think about just the very recent past, there's been this sort of uh, surge of diplomat this craze of diplomatic uh, claims over absolutely irrelevant pieces of territory. <laughs> so, uh, for example, the Moroccans wanted a, a 500 meter long piece of rock called Perejil, and then the Spaniards wanted uh, Salvagens as well. And uh, so I wonder uh, uh, if you've considered that, and uh, if you really think that the reason why people are trying to put a plug on your uh, obviously well-founded uh, <laughs> hypothesis has to do with other types of considerations that have to do with more of the political aspects of it. Uh, as an archaeologist, and I'm addressing you as an archaeologist, as not as a political uh, agent, uh, we never see political in anything, but we know they exist. Uh, I don't think that discovering Atlantis is going to change anything in world history. I think it's just a theory waiting to be proved for the, la the, the at least 2,000 years or 3,000 years. Uh, politically, who is going to claim it? The, the Greeks, because they were the first to, dis to, to say they existed? The Islamic, the Moorish, because Moorish chronicles already mentioned uh, an isle beyond the Pillars of Hercules. The Viking mice. <laughs> I think they are the most eager ones to claim the land, definitely, especially that island. <laughs> Quick question from the audience. No, 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 no. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, thank you for the presentation. For a little while, you, you got me worried. But um, so basically, after after seeing these five presentations, um, we come to the conclusion that the legend of Atlantis is originated by the fall of a small planet <laughs> and brought along a race of, you know, weird coffee drinking mutants that are really keen on communications. Would you care to comment that? <laughs> I promised myself I would leave the aliens outside of this. <laughs> uh, after seeing this presentation, the four presentations previous two hours, uh, I also believe now that probably the reason behind this is just a small planet that brought the Iberian Peninsula and brought uh, this kind of crazy people eager to conquer the world and probably claim Atlantis. And that's the problem because our political fact is resolved. <laughs> so I do believe that the Iberian Peninsula is going to claim Atlantis, definitely. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel.